hello guys and welcome back to the channel now guys not that long ago i brought you a video of Elrofi making concessionary noises in the direction of the southern region stating that uh, the presidency should go to the south in the 2023 and i said in that video that this is almost certainly three-dimensional chess being played by this guy so it is now not taking him that long for him to start to retrace his step again towards his own self-interest so now with that guys i bring you this merit not tribe should determine who leads us el rufai so he's now uh, aligning his uh name is uh nailing his uh banner to the mast of meritocracy so now merit not tribe should determine who leads us that's the headline attributed to uh the governor of kaduna state el rufai so now let's now see what the malami has to say Malam Nasir El Rufai is a household name in Nigeria. He occupies a strategic position in Nigeria's current political dispensation, having been first elected the governor of Kaduna State in 2015 and got re-elected for another term of four years in 2019, thereby solidly stamping his feet on governance of the state till 2023. Malam El Rufai headed the All Progressive Congress Restructuring committee which made some recommendations on how nigeria could be reshaped to make it more responsive to the needs and aspirations of the federating state but the report which has been submitted to the party is yet to be translated into law or implemented nonetheless el rufai's name continues to ring a bell across the country today just as it was in the days when he held sway as the minister of the federal capital territory when his name was associated with the demolition of illegal structures in abuja no matter the status of their owner Many even believe he is gunning for a higher office in the land, even when he has not made any statements to that effect. However, in this interview, El Rufai speaks on which part of the country should take a shot at the presidency in 2023 and why states are angling to raise security outfits and what the National Assembly can do to move the country forward in terms of restructuring. Here are excerpts from the interview your party the all progressive congress saddled you with a very critical assignment of assessing the political structure of the country and recommending how it can be restructured to make it more responsive to the yearnings and aspirations of nigerians having made restructuring one of its programs what has happened to that report and do you really believe in restructuring so that's the question and this is what uh malam uh, nasir has to say well let me say i was asked to chair that committee which had nine governors many senators and many house of representative members it was a multifaceted committee and we were tasked to define in clear terms what we meant in our manifesto when we said we support true federalism which some people call restructuring our committee met for months we went round the country we didn't just sit and write a report we had hearings in every part of the country and we collected feedback from nigerians as to what they wanted and we articulated that in our report and we made some recommendations i believe that nigeria is better run as a federation a lot of the progress we made was because we ran the country as a federation there was an article i wrote which was published in many newspapers about nigeria titled nigeria the federation without federalism in it i pointed out that indeed we call ourselves the federal republic but really we're the only federation in the world that has one centralized police federations have multiple layers of policing but nigeria is the only federation that has one centralized police and one of our recommendations was that there should be state police there should be even local government police and even community police this is one of our key recommendations sadly too nigeria is the only country that is a federation that has federal prisons only the federal government has prisons there is no reason why states should not have prisons because most crimes are state crimes 
So why are the convicts not going to state prisons? So there are a lot in that report and we submitted the report under the then chairman, John Oyegun, and the party was supposed to meet, adopt the report, pass it to Mr. President for him to forward the bill to the National Assembly. The report was not just a report. We drafted the bills and the necessary amendments to the Constitution to give effect to the amendment. For instance, one of our key recommendations is that the ownership of land and the ownership of mineral uh, under the land should be contiguous. Since under the Land Use Act, land belongs to the state, all minerals, solid, liquid and gaseous elements should also belong to the state so that when the state gives you a piece of land, they can also give you the license to man what is also in the land and again this is what most federations are about today in the united states there's no one that sits in washington and tells you that you have a license to man oil in texas it is not done we were able to complete our assignment and submit the report to the then chairman of the party chief john oyegun i believe now is the time for the leadership of the party to take that report and move forward with it. I want to say this with all sense of responsibility. We don't even need that to be done because amending the constitution is not the exclusive preserve of the executive or the party. Any legislator can take our report, which is online with all the bills drafted and sponsor it as a private member bill and it can be done. But finally, there is a constitution review committee under the Deputy Senate President Ovio Omo Agege that has this material before it with our drafted bill to give Nigeria a true federation and I hope that they will take advantage of this and do something in that direction. So that is the long-winded answer that is given to this question. Many Nigerians differ sharply whenever the issue of rotational presidency is mentioned. Do you think rotational presidency makes any sense in Nigeria? So that's the next question and this is what the Malami has to say. I think it is important to look at this from three perspectives. I can give you my personal position. I can also give you our party's position and I will also give you the general political consensus. Let me start with the general political consensus. The general political consensus in Nigeria is that the presidency should rotate between the north and the south. In some parties like the PDP, they even have it in their constitution. Though it is unwritten, but there is that understanding. And I think every politician of honor should recognize and abide by this consensus unless there is circumstances compelling enough to put it aside. I will give you an example of Jonathan in 2011. President Yadua died in office and Jonathan as vice president was constitutionally mandated to take over. So by the time the 2011 election came around, there were voices from the north and the south saying that Jonathan should not run for office but should step down for a northerner to complete the term that Yadua should have done. I did not agree with that for obvious reasons. I did not think think that an incumbent president that got there not by his own design should be prohibited from running when he was not disqualified by the constitution itself and because of that i made a statement in february 2010 saying that it does not make sense for anyone to ask jonathan not to run for office but having run and won the election in 2011 jonathan again put himself in 2015 despite the wise counsel by people who advised him not to run again he did not listen and because of that even within his party people went against him and this is the problem of not honoring this unwritten agreement it made sense to allow him to run the first time in 2011 but not the second time in 2015. I said that there is this general consensus that should only be set aside in extenuating circumstances and this can 
can vary from situation to situation. And I think anyone that says that he doesn't know this understanding is not being honest. By God's grace, one day it will get to a point where it will not matter. But for now, people want to see that and we should abide by it. So that's his answer to the rotational thing. He's in support, even though he said it's not constitutional. So this is a guy playing a game, of course. I think you can read that into uh, the wordings of this as well. So they go on to the next question. But what is the APC's position or rotational uh, government? So they are now trying to localize it to himself and to press him now on his uh, personal uh, uh, ambition with that question. So the next question, but what is the APC's position on rotational presidency? And this is what this chap has to say. In APC, we deliberately omitted putting zoning in the constitution. So in the APC, the emergence of candidates does not take into account zoning so that anyone can contest. That aptly explains why in the last two or three primary elections we had, every person from every part of Nigeria contested. Clearly, anyone that wanted to contest was allowed to contest. So in the APC, the playing field is clear and level. So he's now saying in effect, in effect, rather not in effectively, but in effect, that look, there's nothing that stops me from running against Tinobu. So now on to the next question. So will that remain the APC position in 2023 so they are now really because of course the whole purpose of this uh interview never mind anything else that is being said is to press him on 2023 and his position and he knows this and the interviewer knows this as well so that question again so will that remain the apc's position in 2023 and this is what uh nasir has to say no it may be or may not be as distinct from the PDP, we have no prohibition and anyone is free to contest. So in other words, in APC, it is really on political merit because one has to win the primaries depending on how many parts of the country they are able to garner enough support to emerge victorious. The third level is that personally, I do not like leaders selected based on where they come from because I don't think you will get the best leaders that way. And I do not see any country in the world that has successfully done that on a sustainable basis. Lebanon, for instance, had in its constitution very clear positions on where its presidents, prime ministers and lawmakers should come from. And they are in crisis now as a result of that arrangement. They did it because after the civil war, that kind of arrangement was necessary as an interim arrangement. But when they kept it for too long, today they are plunged into crisis and they had to dismantle it. I have studied countries and I have never seen any country that has made sustainable progress choosing leaders based on where they come from. I think merit should be the overriding thing. People should look at their leaders and say who will take them to the promised land and vote for them and the system should allow the people to make their choices. So that is his answer to that. So he's leaving the door open for himself but it still carries on but that is a personal thing it is a personal view because in my life i have never gotten anything based on where i come from now that is a joke of course because everything he has gotten in life is entirely and solely because of where he comes from and no other reason i believe that i got everything i deserved because of my abilities and a bit of luck and being at the right place at the right time i want to add that those of us from northern nigeria's honor agreements we do not violate unwritten political agreements and i will be the last person to lead in violating that agreement i may have my personal views but my personal views are personal if you look at the government of Kaduna State, we don't appoint people based on where they come from. We appoint people based on their ability to deliver on the mandate that will make Kaduna State move forward. I don't care where the person comes from. There are persons I have worked with 
for years without knowing where they come from, but that is my personal opinion. But as a group, the Northern APC will have to sit down and agree and endorse someone most likely from Southern Nigeria to be the next president because after eight years of President Mohamedou Buhari, I think I am speaking as a person, but I think it is the same thought process amongst most of us. I do not think that the presidency should remain in the north unless there is some extenuating circumstances similar to Jonathan's circumstances in 2011. I don't know from what angle that extenuating circumstance can come from, but all things being equal, we honor our agreement and we keep our words. So that is now what he's saying now. He's saying they honor their agreement and they keep their words. But of course, Malam Buhadi said he was only going to serve one time until he came into office and he's been rigged back in by uh, Mahmoud Yakubo. So you can just dismiss that completely and take that with a grain of salt, with a pinch of salt. Uh, Carison, what's the next question? What do you make of the emergence of state and regional security militias in the country? So they're now describing it as a militia now. It was an outreach, now it's a militia. So what do you make of the emergence of state and regional security militias in the country? And this is what uh, El Rufai has to say. I don't agree with you that they are militias. So yes, I don't agree either. I think they are the expressions of dissatisfaction with the security architecture in the country. Every state in Nigeria has some vigilance service. In Kaduna State, we have it. They are not armed, so you cannot call them militia. They work under the control of the police, and there is an enabling law that defines their function, and there is a process using traditional institutions and religious leaders so that we select credible people for the outfits. But I think that as long as every state does that, I think it is legal. I think the initial misunderstanding with Amotekon was that it was presented as a regional rather than a state level thing. We currently don't have regions as constitutional entities in Nigeria. We should not advance what appears to be an ethnic or regional agenda without the correct legal and constitutional framework. I am happy that the governors of the Southwest have gone back to correct that defect because it was a defect. The Attorney General was right to say that there was no regional legislature that could give legal back into it and that they should go back to the states which are the entities recognized by the constitution to get legal backing. The danger of putting help before substance clearly with the Abatekun thing has led to what some people recently launched here in Kaduda under Shege Kafasa. Those things are totally unnecessary. We all must have some kind of local level community policing structure in every state. That is right and understandable, but that should be guided by law and they should operate in liaison with the security agencies. Because we have not yet amended our constitution to allow states to have state police or to have arms bearing vigilante service, it is very simple. So that is his take now on the Amoteko situation. They've completely blunted that Amoteko of course now and the Amoteko that the people in Yoruba land have in mind is not the Amotekun that they will be getting. It will just be some patakic nonsense that uh, will have no teeth. And this is really what they have done because they have now sent the uh, Inspector General of our police to go and dull their shine in uh, Yoruba land. And he has successfully done that so that you cannot have a regional force. You can only have a state uh, po force under the... Uh, uh, community policing legislature so if you have something that is essentially state-based then you don't really have anything different than uh, what you have already because every state already has some sort of like a structure in place so if you have only a state-based something and they cannot bear arms then it is really not fit for purpose what you really need to be fit for purpose is to have like a regional force and what you want that regional force for is to parade essentially and especially the forestry or the densely forested areas of the southwestern regions 
to uh, monitor what is going on there, especially the marauding and the savaging by the president's tribesmen. So if you have some state uh, something, then it really has no meaning unless they are able to coalesce that uh, state uh, thing into a regional structure. But then if that is possible, I don't know because they've already blocked that off uh, on the past. So they've already blocked that off on the past. So now going back to the real issue, which is the presidency, this guy is leaving the window of opportunity open for himself. He's saying uh, he as another now, he, he honored his own words and we have his words now, they're on record. So he's saying that the power should come to the south uh, so he said that on uh, record as well. Therefore, yeah, he's saying also that if there are uh, situations and circumstances exceptional, then the North uh, would retain uh, the power. So he's saying that and it's on record as well. So it's a plethora of all things, but then of course you have to dive so far and pick out what really pertains. So what this guy is saying essentially is that he's making the first concession uh to, to the southern regions at least in this time period you know the build up of course to 2023 is still a good at least three years away yeah I, if yes at least three years away so the build up to 2023 is still three years away so this guy still has enough scope to realign a position but it's now made a position known in the public space now that that concession goes to the south and going to the south of course is, is essentially Tenobo because there's no one else in the south both in Igbo land and Yoruba land other than that name that people will, uh, will, will, will bring up there's nobody that is going to defeat him either in Igbo land or Yoruba land that is going to go to the defeat uh, Tinubu for the APC ticket. So it's essentially conceding it to Tinubu for the moment. But then, as I said, this is a multi dimensional chess play that is being played by this guy. And I, for one, do not uh, believe anything he has to say. I'm taking it with a grain of salt. So, but how are you taking it? Are you taking it with uh, Maggie sauce instead? However, you are digesting what Malam Erufai has to say. Come tell me all about it in the comment section. But before you do that, Click on the red subscribe button so it turns grey. Bell button notifies you every time I drop a new video. Then come tell me what you are making of what the Malami is saying and how it's positioning himself in the comment section. So I'll leave you here. Carry this conversation on with you in the comment section. But here, I say, peace.